Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Melton. I'm the Messiah Lutheran Church Council President. I'm here to make a special announcement today in regards to Pastor Craig. So, Pastor Craig, if you're watching this, you need to mute for the next two minutes so you get to ruin your own surprise. This year marks a special milestone for Pastor Craig. It makes 20 years that he's been the pastor of Messiah Lutheran and also is 30 years as an ordained minister. We would like to recognize these milestones in a special way. We're working to send Pastor Craig and his wife Linda on a vacation to some place they've never been before. In order to do that, we need your donations. Your donations in excess of the cost of the resort will be given to them for spending money. We would also like to offer to the members of Messiah and or friends of Pastor Craig if you would like to record a message, send a card, have some way of showing your appreciation, you may also contact me about those, and we will make sure that we put those together at a special presentation to Pastor Craig and, and his wife Linda. We will also record that and make that available later online. If you would like to send a donation, if you would send a check, the check needs to be made out to Mike Melton. You can send it to my P.O. Box at P.O. Box 61885, North Charleston, South Carolina, 29419. If you have questions about the video or anything, you can reach me at 843-847-1444. I would like to thank you in advance, and y'all have a blessed day. In this morning's gospel passage, some leaders come to Jesus with a seemingly simple question. Is it lawful to pay taxes or not? And Jesus doesn't debate them, but he reframes the question. When Jesus says, give to God the things that are God's, we are reminded that there is nothing in this world and nothing in ourselves that is beyond the scope of God's care. All that we have and all that we are is from God. We are gathered for worship this day, the 20th Sunday of Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the 45th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. 
Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gate shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Here ends the reading. Our psalm for this day is from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nation and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the, in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? And they answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy God, you have chosen your church for your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that we may be true to you, and that in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction in word and in deed, we may proclaim the greatness of our God. Amen. In the third chapter of Philippians, St. Paul says, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Well, there's some people who may ask, what has God given me? 
And I would offer that the answer to that question is everything. Whether it be the wondrous gifts of creation, or the forgiveness that Jesus offers, or the opportunity given by God for, for you and for me to be gathered within Christ's church for worship and for service. The truth of the matter is it is God who has given and placed into our trust everything, all his gracious gifts. Today, as we heard the gospel read, we listened as Jesus says, give unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Now, well, we've, we've probably all heard this, be, this word from Jesus before. It's, it's quoted often, and we may even have some concept of the passage in which it's set. According to the way the evangelist Matthew tells sacred story, it was the second day of the week we now call holy. The day after Jesus had made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And on that second day in Passion Week, Jesus was busy. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus will curse the fig tree, be questioned about his authority, offer three parables with dire warnings for those who assume they are comfort comfortably within God's favor. He's questioned about the resurrection of the dead and then is challenged and engaged in discuss discussion about the nature of the Messiah. It was a big and busy day just hours before the cross. And today's gospel reading lies within that day's busy agenda. At first glance, it's a failed attempt by the Pharisees and the disciples of Herod the Great to, to trap Jesus on what appears to be a political issue, whether or not it's lawful to pay taxes to Caesar. And we might well imagine the smugness with which they employ this trap. You see, the Romans are against the Roman occupational government and so they bring along the Herodians, people obliged to Rome for keeping Herod in puppet power. So together, you see, it ought to be easy to catch Jesus up. Maybe you notice the false flattery of their opening remarks. Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth. But their insincerity is palpable because then they spring the trap. Tell us then what, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Well, by this time in the day, Jesus is pretty well warmed up for this treacherous game of chess, you see. He sees through their sarcasm to the malice that lies beneath and he brands them as hypocrites. Now the Pharisees are thinking two moves ahead in this game. If Jesus says that it's lawful to pay taxes to the emperor, well, he alienates the people who hate the Roman occupation, and it's Caesar. If he says it's unlawful to pay taxes, well, the people will, will not be, well, the people will be pleased, but Jesus will then be liable for arrest by the Romans. Uh, it's a clever gambit to be sure, but it's not clever enough. Render to the emperor what is due to him, he says, and to God what belongs to God. Check and checkmate. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, Jesus says, and to God, the things that are God's. It's a fabulous answer. It truly put those questioning Jesus in their place, don't you think? But then when you start asking yourself what Jesus really meant by this, then the saying starts to get a bit muddier. Was Jesus an early advocate of our modern notion of separation of church and state. I don't really think he was, but sometimes the passage is interpreted as such. 
Or is he inviting us to recognize that while we may owe the emperors of this world some things, we owe God other things? So how about you? What do you think Jesus means? And while you're thinking about your answer, let me invite you to take an inventory of your life, of your home, of the world that you travel each week. What things are Caesar's and what are God's? How does our faith shape our decisions, our buying, saving, giving, and the rest? Those are some of the questions this text raises for me, and, and maybe at some point we can wrestle with them together. But, but first, let me give you some background for the question. As you know, Jesus, when questioned, he asked them for a coin. I suspect that someone in the crowd came up with a small silver one, and Jesus took the coin. He held it up for the crowd to see and asked, whose image is, on, is engraved on the front of this coin? So someone from the crowd shouted back, it's the emperor's. Of, of course, today we, we find the faces of American presidents and founding fathers on our currency. The, the dollar bill has Washington's, Lincoln is on the five. Presidents Jackson and Grant are on the 20 and $50 bill respectively, while Alexander Hamilton, founder of the National Bank, is on our 10 spot, and wise old Benjamin Franklin graces the front of the $100 bill. Whose image is on our money? Well, that question is, is pretty easy. Now here's what I really want you to consider, and it's this question. Whose inscription is on you? A friend of mine the other day reminded me of the Occupy movement in London and on Wall Street that was so often in our news a few years back. And perhaps that's another way to ask, ask the question. Who occupies you. So what it boils down to is this. To whom do you really belong? Well, clearly the answer is each of us is made in the image of God. There, there can be no doubt then what Jesus means. Give yourself to God because it's to him that you belong. It's, it is God who claims us, who made us in his own image. We don't belong to anything or anyone else. We don't even, we don't even really belong to ourselves. We belong to God in all our being, with all our talents, interests, time, and wealth. Maybe Maybe, just maybe, the words of the old hymn says it better than I. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Because isn't that the words that we sing in the hymn? And you see, the consequences of belonging to God are remarkable. Because first it means that God will not forsake us. The Pharisees and, and the other religious leaders that Jesus denounces were notoriously bad at caring for the people. They forsook their responsibilities and the people God gave into their care. They deserve condemnation, but, but on the other hand, God does not forsake his own. By Friday of Holy Week, Jesus made that perfectly clear in the boldest way possible. And second, it means that because we belong to God, we belong to the people of God, the body of Christ. We're baptized into this fellowship and can only lose our membership by turning our backs on God. If there's any alienation, it's, it's our own doing. And if we return, God is there, always there. And third, it means that we give to God that which belongs to God, that is, we give we give ourselves, we take the sacred trust and invest it in lives of worship and discipleship and service. Sometimes that occurs privately in devotion. Sometimes it happens in church with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And the rest of the time, it occurs within the sphere of daily work and service. All of this, I think, is worship. 
ultimately giving ourselves to God means that we give ourselves to the world that God has created. Well, all, all of us have before us a myriad of ways to serve the Lord in his kingdom. You can probably think of many, but know this. The answer to the question of where you and I are to get the resources to accomplish this ministry of discipleship to which we're called is clear. It's as clear as the words spoken over you at creation. It's as clear as it's as clear as the image of God or the sign of the cross that that marked you as a child of God in baptism. And it's as clear as God's promise that marks you still as a faithful follower of this God. You are simply to give to God the things that are God's. And that's you. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially those whose names are upon our lips or within our hearts. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, may your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confidence of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you, we invite all to receive the bread and wine of the Lord's table within our public service of worship each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m or offered in the parking area of Messiah Lutheran Church from 10 to 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday mornings. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and as a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, the Congregation of Messiah Lutheran Church thanks you for joining this worship this morning. We continue to invite you to join us each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. In, in public worship in our sanctuary at 1106 Yemen's Hall Road, or again by joining us for our online liturgy. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.